Thank you for attending the seminar on Ushering 101. It is not required to attend all the sermon seminars in a specific sequence, but we highly recommend you do all of the 100 series before going on to the 200 uh, series. You wouldn't want to be caught holding a chair and not knowing what to do with it. So, you're probably wondering, well, who are you to be able to tell me how to usher? It's not that hard. You just walk up and down the aisle with bulletins for crying out loud. But I'll have you know it's very hard indeed. And I have ushered in two churches with a family heritage dating back to the 1800s. I have generations of knowledge and experience. So allow me to pass this information on to you. Now you probably got involved in ushering because you, you thought it was interesting, something unique, something that you could get away with doing not much work. And, and I'm sure you heard some, I'm sure you heard some bulletins and stuff, references of, you know, promos such as, get to meet new people. Be one of the first to read the bulletin. Be able to walk from one end of the uh, sanctuary to the other while everyone else has to remain seated. <laughs> Get to travel from one end of the sanctuary to the other. That's no charge. True. And I'm sure promos like this have brought you into this field. But now we need to help you understand the nitty gritty of being an usher. You will be peppered with trying questions and challenges such as, and these are questions commonly asked of ushers, so you need to really pay attention to this and study and know these answers because I guarantee they will come up. <laughs> Can I have a bulletin? <laughs> the approved answers are here, okay? Only if you're going to read it. <laughs> Do you have a place for the children? Yes. Whether or not it's in the same room varies, but we do let them in. <laughs> Where do the singles sit? Alone. <laughs> How long is a typical service? Well, it depends. Are they too long or not long enough? <laughs> Where are there open seats? Where people aren't sitting. <laughs> what are the requirements to take communion? that you eat a cracker and drink some juice. <laughs> what is the church's doctrinal statement? The Bible. If this answer doesn't suffice, go on to answer B. I'm glad you asked that question. And it's an issue dear and dear to myself and many others. In fact, we were discussing this just the other day. In fact, just the other day, a guy asked me a similar question, and you kind of remind me about him. In fact, my cousin, oh, he looked just like my cousin, and we used to, I remember when we were younger, we used to and just start trailing off in some kind of story until they leave you alone. <laughs> easier. Just easier. Trust me on that. How do you become a member? Well, first, you need to attend regularly, accompanied with personal salvation. Once you meet the first two criteria, you'll need to uh, attend a series of classes where all you knew before will be washed away, and all you'll care about will be the further advancement of God's kingdom. So, how would you describe the pastor's sermon? Well, it generally starts out with a sync synopsis and staring features, followed by an in-depth study of the supporting content, uh, with occasional deviations to topics unrelated to the main subject. <laughs> How would you describe the church's music? The music leader tends to start off with the key signature of 440HZ, followed by a loretic scale uh, with a modulation augmented by a per, uh, personic scale, followed by a transposition that augments to a double flat with a cadence accompanied with a chromatic uh, followed by a inharmonic equivalent. <laughs> it is very important to remember that one. You'll get at that one a lot. So now that you have at least some of the knowledge of what is going on with this, the, the questions you'll be asked, you are now thinking you're probably ready. But there's a few other things you'll need to know. For ushering, there are some fringe benefits. 
There are ways to turn this into a full career. Because after all, you have to understand, it does not come with benefits, as far as regular benefits. I mean, if you get a personal injury risk that you risk and face on a weekly basis, they don't cover anything at paper cuts. Handling those bulletins can be very dangerous. And, you know, I tried to explain to them, I got some paper cuts myself, I'll explain it. I'll, I'll, I'm willing and able to face it. And I tried to explain to them that, that there's this clinic that I can go to, and they're very good at dealing with just, not just the physical harm and the injury, the psychological trauma that can come in, because you could develop a fear of paper, you know. And that could be very detrimental. And there's a clinic in, in Hawaii, and I think if they sent me there for like two weeks, um, you know, they, they wouldn't. So I'm letting you know that there are some ways that you can, you can help support yourself in this endeavor. First tip to making ushering pay, uh, accept tips. Good tip, they get the good seat in the back. Bad tip, they get the bad seats up front. No tip, they're on the stage. Second, second, don't just give bulletins away, charge. Don't forget group discounts. Charge an exit fee. Don't charge them to get in, charge them to get out. Fourth, when giving communion, rent the use of the cups. Don't forget a deposit for any lost, stolen, or damaged cups, you know. Gotta make ends meet. Fifth, uh, wear small pins with corporate sponsorship. Larger the church, larger the audience, larger the fee. Can augment nicely. Now that you are prepared for some of the basic concepts of ushering, you're probably thinking, well, why do I need to do all this? I mean, I got it now. I got it. Well, there's many other things to ushering, and we'll cover those in the others. You know, as I said, ushering 101 through 106 is the ba just gives you the basic. And then once you have all that done, you then go on to the 200 series. And, and of course, there you're gone. And you know, so there's many questions that do come up that people ask, and, and so I'll at least give it some teasers of what some of the other aspects are. In, in the Ushering 200 series, then we'll cover much more of the advanced uh, application of, of how to usher. And you know, things such as, they find some of the security aspects. For example, it's called security, but it's actually more of you know, different warning uh, alarms will go off, little signals will be flashed up, like a, a 913, which means somewhere in the sanctuary there's a uh, lizard loose somewhere. <laughs> there's some girls aren't interested in trying to catch them. Uh, and of course, the uh, code 917, that means the uh, uh, elders or the deacons are uh, hungry and want somebody to go for pizza. <laughs> and if you're new, you have to do it because you're new. And you know, some of the, the not so fun aspects. So, with that, we will now open this to questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, you, you and the, the Shaw there, man. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, that's an excellent question. I am glad you brought that up. But you need to understand that really goes into ushering theory, which is a 206 class. And uh, with that one, I, I will tell you this. There is a reason that distribution of uh, bulletins in the church has never been incorporated with the use of a pogo stick. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Uh, let's see. Oh yes, you sir, the baseball cap that didn't, of the team that didn't win the World Series? Um, all right, yeah. It's a, a good, um, it, didn't, it really goes into the more advanced classes and in sections. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think what, because what, I don't want to give it all away. I mean, I don't want to give you too much. Money. But what I said before is that when you're holding a chair and you not know what to do with it, what I meant by that is, you could be left holding a chair not knowing what to do with it. See, sometimes they'll, they'll tell you to go do something, like, go get a chair. You get the chair and you come back and the person's gone. And you don't know if you're being hazed. Is this some joke they're doing to you? To mock you? To ridicule you? Just watch you stand there holding the chair. Were you supposed to take us someplace? They didn't tell you. They didn't tell me. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. So uh, in that section, we'll go over how to better handle such, such, such traumatizing experiences. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, 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 ma'am. Oh, oh, how we handle lost children. That's very easy. Take them to the, uh, the either elders or the head ushers. It's really fun to watch them try to turn bulletins into fun toys. <laughs> Well, it looks like we've at least gotten through most of the questions in the session. So with that, I think we'll call it a day. And don't forget to attend the Usher 102 or any of the other ushering series. But again, all of the 100 first. Of course, pay the incorporated fee. And then go on to the 200 series. Thank you for your time.